Well, I have a gem of a hike for you today. This is pretty low effort, very high reward, uh, well worth the trip. A little difficult to find, but Running Rain Lake should be on your bucket list. Let me show you how I got here. So you can see a glimmer of my, my car uh, up on the highway there. You can see the guardrail. Uh, I'll, I'll link the coordinates to the exact spot where you pull off the road uh, and park in the ditch. There's no designated parking uh, for Running Rain Lake. So you're going to actually come down a, an embankment here in the trees and then follow a path. Uh, there's a numerous amount of paths uh, around this base area here at the creek and uh, just find a spot. The river's running fairly high, so uh, finding a, a dry way to cross is going to be impossible without, you know, going up or down, you know, half a kilometer or so either way. So you can measure the ROI yourself, but uh, just find a shallow spot to cross. And then right across from the car, if you're to come straight down across the river, you'll see the trail. So you'll go through these willows and there'll be another crossing. So here's the second crossing. So normally there's a walkway here that runs basically right here. And then you can continue on the path right there. But uh, the river is super high right now. Uh, we had a real late start to the summer, so the spring runoff that we should have received four weeks ago has finally arrived. So we're basically dealing with spring-like conditions uh, in summertime. It's the middle of uh, July right now. So once you've crossed the, uh, those wet sections, you want to veer to the left uh, and look for the creek. So as soon as you see the creek, uh, you'll see we're on the path already. You'll come to an immediate fork. So if you go straight, it'll take you to a little bit of a switchback to get up to the top up here. We have to get up top on that ridge. It's the only real strenuous part of, of this entire trail. But if you want to challenge yourself, Right here, there's a, uh, a section that goes straight up. So if you want to burn some calories, let's head on up this trail and we want to get up on that ridge. I'm going to go and do the, uh, the switchback way, just down here and to the left.
So the last little bit, like the last 150 meters, uh, it's like prime grizzly habitat as well. You know, especially in late summer, uh, the berries, everything are ripe. It's a storm coming in. I've been hearing thunder for the last little while, so I'm gonna get to the lake real quick and then uh, do a little bit of a sprint to get out of here. So looking back, that's the way I came from. And there's actually two parts to this lake. This is the first lake, a little bit shallower, warmer. That's where most of the fish are. Uh, there's cutthroat in here. I was out here actually last weekend and I saw a guy fly fishing out here and within like five minutes he had five, six fish already. Uh, but yeah, right here, normally this time of season the water's a lot lower and there's actually uh, all the rocks that you can step on and you don't get your feet wet to come over here uh, like I did today. Uh, but uh, I normally come to this side and uh, usually have a fire here and uh, have a little break and enjoy the scenery. So another good thing about this hike and uh, this location is it has large trees. So here's one right here. So a large tree is basically a, a pine tree. It's a needle tree. Uh, but rather than being an evergreen, large trees, uh, they turn yellow in the fall like normal trees and they lose their needles and they get fresh ones every year. So out here, uh, on the east side of the Rocky Mountains, you know, we have larch season, uh, similar to, you know, people in uh, down east or like New England and stuff like that, where they look at all of the maple trees turning all the different colors. We have the larch trees uh, that turn yellow. Not as spectacular, but it, if you get a great vista shot, it's quite impressive. But normally they're pretty high up and out of reach so that's what's special about this hike is that you can actually come up to a large tree quite easily these needles feel amazing very soft feathery like they look fantastic in the fall running rain lake is a fantastic day hike with all my filming and, and all that kind of stuff it, it took me 55 minutes to get here but if you're looking to spend the night or have a nice quick little camping trip Running Rain Lake has a great spot for you. So when you're over here on the far side, there's a, a little trail that most people don't know about. And there's a phenomenal campsite in, in behind, sheltered from the wind. So just for reference, this uh, little log bridge that you take to get to the lake, the back end of the lake. So basically right at this at this log uh, exactly looking backwards from here right here you see a little little trail it's kind of grown over already so i'll just walk you to it i've camped out here before <clears throat> a little bit of a climb to get to the the flat ground Here it is. Nice log to sit down, enjoy the fire. Someone made a chair a long time ago. This was here like four years ago when I was here camping. But a lot of flat spots here and behind sheltered, tons of firewood. A lot of deadfall in here. Figured I'd uh, film the reverse angle to give you some perspective when you come out. Here you are. Look at these tent caterpillars. 
everywhere in the slow lying grass. It's absolutely disgusting. Just gross. Just getting back to the car. Uh, three kilometers each way. So it's 55 minutes on the way there and 41 minutes on the way back. What a beautiful hike. I'll put the coordinates uh, for the trailhead in the description below. But definitely make your way out here. Even if you want to wait until larch season uh, to see some of those larches uh, away from the more popular spots that people go and they don't know about this one. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming along and uh, I'll see you at the next one.